Father, glorify your Son. And this is the statement that we are going to, dis to disclose and as well as to explain. How can we, as a people of God and Jesus Christ, glorify the Father? As well as the Father is going to glorify each one of us in Jesus Christ. According to the uh, statement from Concepcion Cabrera, remind us this beautiful passage that really invite us to be, be, to be aware in her writings in uh, 57, 146 to 50. She, she wrote this beautiful statement to all of us. My father adopted me, a human body, although most holy of all, to approach men, to appoint him to heaven, to make known to him who my father was, and to quench my thirst for love, multiplying his adorations and his glory by free beings who cons consciously will sacrifice themselves in my union with him. How can we are going to glorify the Father and how the Father is going to, go going to glorify all of us to be aware about our own human condition because God created your body. And that's one of the most profound gifts that you need to pay attention about your life. If you want to glorify the Father, you need to take care of your body. Because your body, according to the presence of God, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And in the moment that Jesus came to one of us and adopted our own existence, and then takes seriously his con our own condition and take the time to incarnate it, and then spend nine months inside in her mother's womb, and Jesus know how the body is precious and how the Father created the body. Nine months was working in silence, God. And your mother's womb create unique body. No one is like you. And especially your system is beautiful. And that's why Jesus emphasized to, to all of us in order to glorify God the Father, we need to take care of our own system our own existence, but especially our body. Because God, the Father, created this beautiful body. And Jesus became aware and said, I am going to use my body to glorify you, to bring you gifts. And the gifts I am going to give you to you is first to give you thanks through my capacity of love. And that's why Jesus reminds us in Concepcion this, my Father adopt me a human body, although most holy of all, to approach men, to appoint him to heaven, to make known to him who my father was, and to quench my thirst for love, multiplying his adorations and his glory by free beings who cons consciously will sacrifice themselves in my union with him. Second way, if you want to glorify the Father, if you want to glorify the Father, you need to take conscience about, about your capacity of love. And the third way, in order to glorify the Father in Jesus Christ, to take conscience about your potential of your soul, your will, and your freedom, in order just to promote unity. Even Concepcion added this beautiful statement, My Father saw in me the very thirsty that consumed me from giving, for giving him, him something of me, more mine, dependent on him, as well as being produced by him with the divine substance of himself. And for that also, and very mainly, made me man, creating through the Holy Spirit, the divine incarnation in Mary became men while remain God. Because look, that are a secret, being so great, so infinite and eternal and without beginning, my love for the Father. Still my divine being wanted more. I long to have more to give to my Father, to offer Him as to glorify Him, but with a very intimate and holy thing and will you know what these things that drove me 
crazy in favor of my father's was in my inestimable and ardent love for him? This is something that we need to, be, to pay attention about how Jesus became aware to all of us to be more kind with our own existence. That's why Jesus tells to Concepcion, please, my daughter, pay attention about the incarnation. In the moment that the Father sent me to the world and then through the action of the Holy Spirit became one of the human beings, you need to understand the whole Trinity is working together. And in order to glorify the Father, we need to pay attention about how can I unite my human spirit in communion with the Holy Spirit. And this is the fourth way. The first is to take care of your body. Second, to take care of the capacity of love that you have. And you need to educate that capacity of love. As well as you need to pay attention. The third way to pay attention about to educate your freedom. And to love through your potential of your soul. And your will. You need to be united as Our Lady. Unite her will to the Archangel and especially to God. And say, I am here in my free will because I want to learn to love according to divine nature. Not only, not only according to the human nature, no, according to the divine nature. In order to glorify the Father, we need to pay attention about the way that Jesus came, one of us, and how he takes seriously his existence, his love, his kindness as a human person, as a unique. And that's why Jesus doesn't like it to compare to one another, another person. That's why when someone said to him, you look like, no, no, Moses is Moses and I am, I am, means I am God with you. Moses is an instrument. He is a man he, that God the Father called him through me. And he is the person who liberated from Egypt, but I am who is going to liberate you from sin, from death, and from the devil. It's another way, in another, in another level. I am who am I? That's why Jesus emphasized in order to glorify my Father, I need to take seriously my all existence. And I am going to use my intellect and my common sense and my all being in order just to be united with my father in order to glorify my father that's why conception emphasized this i long to have more to give to my father to offer him and to glorify him by with a very intimate and holy thing and will you know what these things that drove me crazy and feral on my father's was in my insatiable and ardent love for him the sacrifice and to satiate in his son the father that vehemently to love him more and more he devised angel language to make me man to give me a human body a nature of human life that while remain remaining god were at the same t at the same time man to immolate it that Men will all the sufferings and the martyrdoms of body and heart to honor and glorify him, to burn him as a soft and silent as an incense that will perfume the adoration of the fathers by the son of made men of their God men to the divinity, give him to love, but love painful, expiatory love, crucified love. Conception remained so very powerful to all of us, and especially in, in her maturity, in her life as a woman, as a person, as a daughter, as a mother, as a widow, and especially as a mystic, as a good writer, but also as a good person who deal with her life. Concepcion wrote this almost 60 when she was 65 years old and really expressed her kindness about the existence of God 
and God disclosed herself very profound. That's why Jesus, in order to glorify my Father, I need to sacrifice myself. Second point, in order to glorify the Father, you need to understand it's true love. And that's why even Diodemus of Alexandria in his book, second 12 and pages 29 and, one, and six, six, seven and six, seven, four, he said this, the Holy Spirit renew us in baptism. The Holy Spirit renew us in baptism through his Godhead, which he shared with the Father and the Son. Find us in a state of deformity. The Spirit restore our original beauty and fill us with his grace, leaving no room for anything unworthy of our love. The Spirit frees us from sin and death and changes us from the early men we were, men of dust and ashes, into spiritual men, shares in the divine glory, sons and hairs of God, the Father, who bear a likeness to the Son are, and are His cohorts, cohorts of brothers, dest destined to reign with Him and to share His glory. In place of earth, the Spirit reopens, happens to us and gladly admit us into paradise giving us give even more greatly honor than the angels and by the holy waters of baptism extinguishing the unquenchable fires of hell conception cabrera remind us and even donisius of alexandria remind us this beautiful way in order just to be more aware of our own, ex, our own way to glorify the Father, we need to receive the sacraments. And through the sacraments, we are going to become more and more aware about the existence of divinity. How can we grasp the divine life? It's through the sacraments. The more you celebrate the sacraments, the more you become more and more the likeness of God. Why? Because the sacrament is going to help you to from, remove from you the dusk, all the darkness, in order to bring you light, life, even a new way to see your existence. Who is the person who is going to help you? The Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus emphasized to conception and say, it's through the incarnation. And who did the incarnation? The Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit enlighten Jesus to say it is important to sacrifice through your whole will and your freedom your body in order to please the Father and to save the humanity that's why Jesus emphasized this beautiful statement the sacrifice and to satisfy of his son to the Father does vehemency to love him more and more he devised in your language to make me man, to give me a human body, a measure, an, an, a measure of human life. Jesus became so aware about how he is going to glorify the Father. Say, so first of all, you need to be realized who you are. Are you happy with yourself? This is the question that you need to address in this first message. Are you happy with yourself? Are you happy the way you are living yourself? Are you happy even the result that you receive and you are living now? Maybe in this pandemic experience, you are, you have more time to say, who am I? Who am I? I am happy the way I am or I need to switch myself and I need to recover my lightness according to God, not according to my human condition. And especially I need to pay attention about the Holy Spirit Otherwise, I am going to destroy this beautiful moment, this time that God is enlightening me in order to go and touch my own human condition. And that's why Jesus emphasized to conception, God the Father gave me to make me a man, to give me a human body, a nature of human life, that while remain God, we're at the same time man, to immolate. How can you become through you, 
sense, through your emotions, through your intellect, and especially through your potential of your soul, and say, I am going to immolate myself. And in other words, I am going to sacrifice myself in order to please other people. You know, Our Lady remind us in 1917 when Our Lady of Fatima appeared to Lucia and as well as Francisco and the another lady, Our Lady said, it is time to make some sacrifices for other people, to make some sacrifices for sinners. You need to pray for sinners and you need to do something for them. And Jesus said to all of us, in order to glorify my Father, I am going to, to deny myself. And to deny myself, I'll say, I am, I am so conscious about who am I. I got a body, I have a will, I got a freedom, I have a, a memory, and I am, I am intellectual person. And through my intellect, I am going to use all my potentials, my gifts, my virtues, in order to say, Lord, I would like to offer everything in order to please you, in order to bring you a new blessings to you, and I am going to sacrifice myself for others. This is very profound, and this is the way that we need to understand how Jesus honor his father and glorify his father because he became conscious about who he is do you become conscious about your, your, your human body are you happy with your body let me ask you the second question are you happy the way you are living with your body and maybe you are not happy because you have so many some specific illness you have diabetes you have have pressure, you have problems with your kidneys, you have problems with your blood, you have some kind of problems with your heart or your mind, or you even you have some problems with your nerves. Why? Because you don't take conscience about that you are human and you spend time just relaxing yourself without exercise and your body needs exercise. You need to go out and walk and then to renew yourself and to or you don't, and these times many people say, stay home. You can make exercise in your home. You can make a specific treatment there. You need to create something in order to exercise yourself. Even if you don't happy about your blood pressure, maybe you already have extra weight. You don't need that weight. You need to make some exercise to say, I need to change my diet. I need to change this way to eat i need to remove from me uh, this kind of uh, fat things i need to do it why because i need to take care of my body i need to consider this body is a blessing for me and this is something very profound that we need to consider that's why it's important to pay attention about this specific blessing and i am going to just to take time jesus bring us his body and say i am alive said to San Faustina, I am alive. And that's why Jesus invited us to all of us today. Take care of your bodies. Just let us watch a minute and let us consider this beautiful image. This image reminds us to all of us how important it is to consider each one of us this special statement to be aware about our own existence. Jesus reminds us today that it's so important to be part of this plan of salvation. And that's why Jesus tells us to San Faustina, I give you my image to remind the humanity they need to be humans. You need to consider that your body is a, is a very precious place. God created for you. Maybe you are not happy the way you are thinking. You need to switch your mentality. You need to switch the ideas, the, uh, the, the, the way you read, the way you watch the things. Even you need to switch the programs. You need to start maybe to a new habit, to, to read the good books. Maybe at the beginning it's hard. I know it's hard to read and read and read and read. But maybe you need to understand if I am still keep it my way in that level, I am going to destroy myself. It's time to glorify the Father. And how I am going to glorify the Father? Through my own existence. And my existence is a precious place. It's my body. 
I need to sacrifice my body. That's why maybe it's a, a good moment to say, I am going to sacrifice my body and to say, I am not happy about mm, the way I am feeling. I am feel tired. I am feel exhausted. Why I don't sleep well? I became angry constantly. Maybe because you eat something that is not, doesn't help you and affect your personality, your emotions, your passions, even your desires. Why? Because you don't pay attention about the way you eat. You know, let me share in a, an experience. Uh, almost six years ago, I was working a very good uh, job and, and, and especially a project on my town. And they asked me to help. And I say, I don't have time. I am a missionary. I am working. I am have a full time. I am working in vocations. And they said to me, give us your advice. The only thing that we need for you is guide us. And, say, and then I, I told them, I am going to offer one year for you. And I am going to consecrate a specific day is off for you to help you. Okay. And then we started to make some different kinds of meetings. And, and I was working with many people around in the States, in Los Angeles, in Modesto, in San Francisco, in, in Oakland, as well as in San, in San Jose, in, uh, even in Manteca, in uh, Portland, in Guadalajara, Cojumatlan. And I told them, I am going to offer my vacations for you. I am going to work with you. And what happened? One of those vacations, I remember I didn't sleep well for a few days because we are working so hard. My sugar became up and I became aware. I say, what? I don't feel good. And I went to the doctor and I was talking with the, um, one of the best friends and, and especially is a cousin and he's very good, good doctor. I am, I am uh, really appreciate his kindness and his job that he did to me in that time as well as he's still de doing to me and take care of me. And, and uh, Guillermo Sandoval. And, and really, he helped me say, if you keep it the way you are, you are going to have diabetes. Do you want diabetes? And say, no, and this time I don't need it. And say, if you, need, if you don't need it, that diabetes means you need to switch the way you are living, the way you eat. And that time you, I add to my tortillas, flour tortillas. Oh, that's good. And especially when my mom will start cooking, oh, it was delicious. And say, if you are eating 10 tortillas, you need to take two. And that's it. And you need to switch your diet. Second, you need to uh, walk or make exercise. And for me, I remember it was very tough at the beginning, my exercise. And by little by little, little by little, little by little became more aware, say, oh, I am feel better. I started losing weight. And he said to me, the third thing is this, you don't need at least 50 pounds. You don't need it. Remove from your body. You need to change your diet. Really, if this is serious, if you are going to keep it the way you are living, you are going to die so early. And you have a, you are going to have a lot of problems with your diabetes. And say, I don't need it. And he said to me, and you hence, you have the power. And you hence, you have the ability. And you have, you even, your will, you need to use your will. You always talk to all of us to love each one of us, love yourself. And when he said to me, love yourself, say, I am doing these things for God. And I am doing these things in order just to please God in myself. And I start working after two years and a half. And you know, the project, the project became finished in one year. And then I saw him at the end of the year. And he said to me, you already lose. 20 pounds, you need to still work in. And then I, he checked me, the blood say, oh my goodness, this is good, keep it. And you know, after two years working very hard and I am still working in that, in that way, say, take care of you, your body. 
And this is something important. That's why Jesus emphasizes if you don't make some sacrifices in order to take care of your body, you are going to destroy the relationship and you are going to destroy the way to you are going to glorify the Father. Because the first thing that we need to pay attention about to glorify the Father is to take care of your body. If you don't take care of your body, forget about it to be back to heaven. No. Because God tells us today through conception this beautiful statement. I need to take care of myself. I need to, to know who am I. I am happy with the way my heart is work. And I, you know the second thing he said to me, you have some difficulties in your diabetes, but also in your heart. If you keep it, your heart, and the way you are living, you need to sleep well. And I told him, you know, in the last almost two weeks, I don't sleep well. And he said to me, if you want to have some kind of problems, cardiac problems, heart problems, keep it. I will see you later, here. And maybe you are going to die and when struck. Pay attention about this. When he said to me, that this second, this, this second I stand and say, if I don't pay attention, I am dying. Because I wanted to die. I don't want it to die right now. I want, I, I want to die according to God's plans. And what, what am I doing? I need to switch the way I am sleeping. And then I switch my mentality. And this is something very profound that we need to pay attention. And you know, since that time, I added these five points. First, every night I take a shower before I go to sleep, five minutes or 10 minutes before. And then I spend half an hour or 45 minutes or an hour, depends on my days, in adoration before I go to sleep. And then I try to eat three times a day. Third, four, I make my exercise every day. No matter what, with the climb, it is raining, it is snowing, it is hot, or whatever, I need to figure out what is the best time. And the fifth, pray and consecrate everything to the Holy Spirit every morning. And at the end, ask for reconciliation. These five things helps me a lot in my life. And I am feel better. And now I see the diabetes life far away. I see it and say, if I don't pay attention about this, I need to consider this illness. I don't need this illness yet. I need to work in and I need to make some sacrifices. And this is the second point. How can you sacrifice yourself and to please the Father according to Jesus? Jesus reminds us this beautiful statement in, in order to help us. The sacrifice and to satisfy in His Son the Father the vehemency to love Him more and more. He devised in your language to make me man to give me a human body, a nature, and a human life that while remain God, were at the same time to immolate that man with all these sufferings and the martyrdom of body and heart to honor and glorify him, to burn him as a soft, scent, incense, incense that will perfume the adoration of the Father by the Son made man of the Son God man to the divinity giving him love but love pain, painful expiatory love sacrifice love and this is a good moment maybe in this time say how can I sacrifice myself how can I crucify myself no in the negative way you know let me tell you this and I want to be honest with you you know, you're working too much. Before this pandemic, you're working too much. Maybe you have two jobs. And what, ha what happened when you have your day off? You go to the casino. And what happened? You sacrifice almost 60 hours or 70 hours, a, a, a 60 hours a, a week. And what happened? You don't sleep well. You don't eat well. But you have time to go sacrifice yourself and play in the casino and what happened in two hours or in three hours or in half an hour you check it's gone what happened you sacrifice for what for half an hour and even you don't testing well 
come on. And many of us do these kind of things before this pandemic. Or even, you know, let me I'll give you another example. How many men and women in this moment and the young people, and especially the young in this generation, in, the, in this century, they spend too much time in TV and weekends. And what happened at the end? You became angry, exhausted, tired, you don't sleep well, you have a lot of ideas, and what's going on? You, be, you sacrifice too many hours seated, and your body is already exhausted and tired, and you became even so exhausted about this. You sacrifice yourself, you crucify yourself there, and what happened even those people, of, especially the the guys who drink or make some drugs, what happened? They working so hard in construction. And what happened at the end? They need marijuana or they need cocaine or they need some another substance. For what? And they lose themselves. They sacrifice themselves for what? And how much, how much money they spend in drugs? Too much money just for one substance and jesus said use your time use your life use your will use your freedom use your intellect use your potential of your soul as well as your physical abilities emotions and a sense in order to sacrifice in order to promote life for you and for others not that no sin no the devil and this is something that we need to pay attention. Many of us, before this pandemic, we don't glorify God. We glorify ourselves, and many times we glorify the devil. And this is the time to pay attention about this experience. That's why Concepcion said that is, we see in this text the nonsense of the behaviors divinizing plan consisting of Following Jesus' example, man makes his own the pain, the suffering, and the martyrdom that comes as a result of seeking union with the Father and the Son through the action of the Holy Spirit. Man needs to make his own for love. These aspects thus promote an integral divinizing process of being and of anyone who accepts gen generously to respond to the call and vital motions and options to acquire the divine nature of God. We must be open to make his own this style of life of offertory and sacrifice. How many times, let me give you this example to you, how many times you as a mother, when your kid was very little, how many times do you sacrifice yourself? And especially when he was sick, or especially when he cried too much, or especially when he needs to clean himself. You woke up in the middle of the night and you clean him. And why in this moment you don't sacrifice you for your son now and to tell him you need to be more responsible for your life as well as I was responsible for you. This is a time to, that you learn to sacrifice yourself. It is a time to renew your own contact with, you, with yourself. It is a time to teach, to teach you, you, your sons, to teach your daughters. And this is the time also your daughter and your son sacrifice themselves for you. It is another way to sacrifice but especially to glorify God the Father. Brothers and sisters, my mother said to me once, and let me share you this, and this is the third message. I remember after seven, seven months when I was in the novitiate, for me, I don't sleep well at the beginning. It was very tough. And especially when you already have your future and really working very well. I had a good job. I have a, a new car. I have my department. I have everything. Fix. I was 25 years, and I had very success in, 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 in my job. And what happened? God called me and said I left everything, and I enjoyed the seminary. After seven months, I had a meeting with my mom. And my mom reminded me this beautiful statement that really helps me a lot 
when I was in that time, I told my mom, you know, mom, I am so exhausted. I don't know if really this job is for me or not, but uh, I am so tired. I am really, I am leaving the seminary. And my mother said to me this beautiful statement that really helped me a lot. And I am going to read for you the second reading uh, we we just heard yesterday and the and the and the and and and, and, and Sunday is from the first letter from St. Peter 3 15 18. And Peter said, Beloved, sanctify Christ's love, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. But do it with gentleness and reverence. Reverence, keeping your cons conscience clear so that when you are malignant, those who def deflame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good if that be the will of God than for doing evil. For Christ also suffering for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God, put to death in the flesh, and he was brought to life in the spirit. I was talking with my mother, and I was thinking, I was thinking at that time, say, Mom, I am living, I am so exhausted, I am so tired. My mom was listening to me almost for an hour. I was express my frustrations, my tiredness, my all the kind of the complaints that I live and all the per difficulties that I saw inside. And my mother was silence. And he said to me, like Peter, let me tell you this. Whatever choice that you are going to do, you are going to suffer. My mother said to me that. Say, what? Yes. If you are going to be single, if you are going to be a priest, if you are going to be a religious, or you are going to be a, a husband, you are going to suffer. Wherever you go, this is part of our own existence. You cannot deny. But it's different, and that's the key. It's different when you suffer according to the will of God. Because if you leave the seminary, and then you are living because you are suffering here, you are going to suffer over there. But it's different if you are here because God is calling you to be here or if you are living there according to your will. You are going to still suffer, but you are going to suffer according to your will and you are going to suffer according to God. What is your choice? Do it according to your discernment. And my mother became quiet after this. And really helps me a lot. Since that moment on, I felt like say something is coming to me. And I I became so aware about this text. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. Peter said in his first letter, chapter 3rd, Versicles 15, 18. And for me, what's the key? Brothers and sisters, it is important to become aware about your own sacrifices, about your own pain, about your own illness, about your own situation. Use it as a tool in order to be more aware, in order to create the intimacy with the Father and Jesus, as Jesus did. And that's why Jesus had one purpose, to glorify his Father. Even it is important to continually this and this third point. This intimacy between Jesus and the Father manifests itself with the unmistakable failures in the way Jesus prays. When praying, he always calls God Father. The only time Jesus addressed God by calling him my God is on the cross. Precisely because he prays by quoting Psalm 21 or Matthew 27, 46. But let me tell you, also after Jesus rise, Jesus said again to Mary Magdalene, My God, 
and my father my father and your father my God and your God Jesus addressed the father by calling him Abab like we discover in Mark 14 26 the Christians tradition has understood the exclamation Abab of Jesus as an expression of his unique awareness of filiation to the father to this we shall add the fact that Jesus never put his filiation to the Father at the same level as ours. Thus, he never called him our Father, but used the expression, my Father and your Father. John 20 says, 17, without ever including himself in our filiation, the same happens with Jesus' prayer. It is a low, loving dialogue with his Father. It is an intimate filiation. Jesus teaches to pray by always praise alone. And we discover this in Mark 1 25, 6 46, 14 22, as well as in Luke 22, 5 16, 6 12, 9 28, 11 1. Jesus' behavior satisfies the fact that the first Christian community has understood in this expression above. But even St. Paul said in Galatians 4, 6, as a manifestation or a singular awareness of his filiation. That is, as a manifestation of his awareness of an infinite relationship with God as a son in the, fullness, in the full sense that we discover in Jeremiah in, in his book, Abba Jesus et Son Pere, and the page 62-67, as well as in Shurlet, in his book Preparation of Preparación de la Revelación Trinitaria, in the page 94 to 95, and as well as in Tertuliano, we discovered this in Adversus Prexem, Prexem 14 night and 1482. He, he wrote this, the sun is thus the one who made the Father known, the one in whom the Father's face is visible. How Jesus glorified the Father when Jesus said to Philip and Thomas and the rest of the apostles, the one who said me, said my Father, because I am doing everything according to my Father. Let me tell you this, an example, in order to understand this concept. You know, I, I have the experience in, 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 in my priesthood and I remember once when I was working in Oxnard, one of the best friends that I have, and he invited me to the one of the receptions, and, and he said, Father, could you go to bless my son? Because he's going to do the finals, and I am worried about him. And what happened? I blessed him, and he went to his exam, the final exam, and he became a, a, a lawyer. And really, it is really when the father saw his son receive the diploma, the certificate, the father became so joyful, and as well as the mother, so happy. And he said to, to me, this is my son. And then when the son came and said, Father, everything I did for you, and thanks be to you, I have this career. And this is for you. And when the son gave the diploma to his father, the father said, this is my son. And that's the way his son glorified the father and the father glorified his son. Why? Because the son sacrificed too many times, too many nights, too many days in order to fulfill that goal as well as the father. He sacrificed many good things, many times. Even he did a lot of work, extra work, in order to pay the intuition, even the bills about the career. Both made some sacrifices for each other. That's why Jesus said to all of us, I need to help you to understand that we need to glorify the Father. Let us do it together. And this is something important. I'm going to read this statement from Tertulliano Adversus Praxian, in number 160, 62, and he wrote this, 
the trunk is not divided from the root, not from the source, not the sun's ray, nor it is the word separated from God. Therefore, according to the image he provides these examples, I confess that I speak of two, God and his word, the Father and his Son, because the root and the trunk are two things, but united and the source and the, and the river are two manifestations, a species but undivided, and the sun and the ray, and the ray are two forms but linked, co co coherent. Tertulliano reminds us that Jesus is one with the Father and the Son is one with the, with the, with the, with the Father. The Son is together with the Father and the, and the Father is together with the Son. That's why this Father became so happy and after the Father received and the Mother received the certificate, both of them embrace the Son and they cry, cry with happiness. They cry physically, and they, and I, I saw the joy of, about this family. They became one. They are three, but they are one. Both became one. The father, the mother, and the son became one. And love. They recognized that every sacrifice that they did they help us to be who they are. And I am going to make the first conclusion. Concepcion Cabral reveals the awareness of Jesus' filiation with his father. She said this. I am going to read this beautiful statement and said, I already brought in my divinity when incarnating those two loves in one. That that gratitude, I will say, to where my heavenly Father, it was an honor for me as meant to give him the glory of my submission to his will, that of my blood, bloody sacrifice encouraged me through his sacrifice to save the world and the est establish my church that will glorify him in time and eternity and also as God who knew all of my father's thoughts, so in him as in a, sp a spotless glass, his infinite love toward me in the imperishable everlasting crown that he prepared me as God man with glory over glory and without leaving his unity. Look, this double bond of gratitude to my father is not mediated this sort of double filiation without living his unity is scarcely contemplated co contemplated this sort of owing favors from eternity to eternity because in the beginning it was already the word produced by the fruitfulness of the father in himself it is not mediated and look in God. It is not first one thing and another later, but everything in him has been and is and will be eternal. This statement that we discover in Concepcion in her diary 56, numbers 276 to 79. This is something important, brothers and sisters, the loving sacrifice to please the fathers of the father is presented and projected on the cross of the apostle of the chief. This is why Jesus said to Concepcion, it's through love that you can make a sacrifice. You can do from another source. Only the primary source to sacrifice to, to yourself is love because you love. That's why you sacrifice yourself. And, and it, Jesus said to Concepcion, it's clear that submission of the Son to make his own the will of his Father, save men in any kind and condition and share with them in, in his divinization. It is a sacrifice that aims to return humanity to, the, to, uni, to union with the God, the Trinity. 
and that's the blessing and I am going to conclude it with this second conclusion again and Jesus said in the gospel today something very profound that we need to be aware about our own mission why because Jesus is always aware about us and Jesus said to his disciples when the advocate comes whom I will send you from the Father the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father he will testify to me and you also testify because you have been with me from the beginning I have told you this so that you may not fall away they will expel you from the synagogues in fact the hour is coming when everyone who kills you will think he is offering worship to God they will do this because they have not known either the Father or me I have told you this so that when their hour comes you may remember that I told you this is beautiful Jesus is experiment to all of us through him new wisdom new strength new courage new light this light it is not in the in the physical sources it's in the divine sources that's why we need to spend more time in silence in contemplation and meditation and this is the key to us and this is the second conclusion and I am going to do it from the Demus of Alexandria when he spoke about of the Trinity and he added this when men and women are conceived twice to the human body we up our first conception to the divine spirit our second John says to all who receive him who believe in his name had he gave power to become children of God they were born not by human generation not by the desire of the flesh not by the will of men but of God all who believe in Christ he says receive power to become children of God that is of the Holy Spirit and to gain kinship with God to show that their parents was God the Holy Spirit he aids these words of Christ I give you this solemn warning that without being born of water and the Spirit no one can enter the kingdom of God conception explained to us that Jesus have two lives two beautiful gifts and and Jesus said this beautiful experience I already brought in my divinity when incarn incarnating those two loves in one that double gratitude I will say to where my heavenly father it was an honor for me as men to give him the glory of my submission to his will that of my body my bloodly sacrifice encouraging me through this sacrifice to save the world and to establish my church that will glorify him in time and eternity and also as God who know who knew all of my father's thoughts so in him as in a spotless grass his infinite love toward me in the imperishable everlasting crown that he re prepared me as God men who glorify over glory and without living his unity look this double bond of gratitude on my father is not meditated this sort of double filiation without living his unity is scarcely contemplated this sort of owing favor from eternity to eternity because in the beginning it was already the war produced by the fruitfulness of the father in himself it is not meditated and look in God it is not first one thing and another later but everything in him has been and is and will be eternal 
Concepcion remind us very profound a statement as well as Dionysius the no, Demos of Alexandria remind us in, her, in, in his writings we need to to born in water and spirit it is not enough to say I am a human I need to you to unite my humanity with the Holy Spirit in order to please the Father and this is the invitation. This is the third conclusion. Diodemus Alexandria said, visibly, through the mini to ministry of priests, the font gives symbolic birth to our visible bodies. Invisibly, through the ministry of angels, the Spirit of God, whom even the, the mind's eye cannot see, baptized into himself both our souls and bodies giving them a new birth. Speaking quite literally and also in harmony with the words of water and spirit, John the Baptist says of Christ, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit with fire. What is the meaning of our fire? Is the sacrifice. He offered himself for us, for you and for me. Since we are only vessels of clay, we must first be cleansed in water and then hardened by spiritual fire. For God is a consuming fire. We need the Holy Spirit to perfect and, and renew us. For a spiritual fire can cleanse us and a spiritual water can res rescue us as an affirmance and make us into a new man and woman. And I will read the gospel again. When the advocate comes, whom I will send you from my Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify to me, and you also testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. This is the blessing for you and for me. God knows us since the beginning. That's why Jesus said to Concepcion this, From eternity to eternity, because in the beginning it was already the world, produced by the fruitfulness of the fathers in himself. It is not mentioned. It is that's why important. How can I glorify the Father in, in his Son? Through the Holy Spirit, through love, through your own offering and your free will. And this is the exhortation today. Let us conclude with this beautiful idea in Isaiah 40 and chapter 43, versicles 3 and John 4, 14. I will pour out water upon the thirsty land and streaming upon the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit upon you all spring and they shall grow like a will by flowing streams. The water I give shall become a fountain with him willing up to eternal life. I will pour out my spirit upon you, spring, all springs, and they will show, grow like a will, willows by flowing streams. May God bless you and bring you peace to you and guide in you in this time. And let us consecrate to the Holy Spirit through this prayer, through conception that she wrote it. And let us pray together as well as Father Felix wrote this and emphasized this beautiful consecration. Both of them, they said, and let us be with them and united in the Holy Trinity. O Holy Spirit, receive the perfect and complete consecration of my whole being and all my actions. Grant me the grace of being my light, my guide, my strength, and the love of my heart. I surround myself to you, and I ask of you the grace to be faithful to your inspirations. Holy Spirit, transform me through Mary and with Mary into a true image of Christ Jesus for the glory of the Father and the salvation of the world. Amen. Let us surrender ourselves to the Holy Spirit and let us sacrifice with love our lives and let us offer this time of pandemic in order to be more aware of all our own mission. May God bless you and keep you body and your soul with pure all the time. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, keep you body and your soul with pure. 
Amen. I will see you tomorrow. You guys will. Around 11. Pray for me. And I am praying for you. And especially let us continue to pray for the doctors and the nurses. Amen.